Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is your favorite Indai, your nurse in charge. And in this video, we are going to talk about the introduction of Nursing Research Part 2. But before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. So, let's start after the intro. Mm -hmm. From part 1, we were able to discuss what is research and the purposes of nursing research. We were able to discuss the diagram of research. And now, on this video, we are going to continue the discussion especially on different approaches and, and the type of researches that are based on purpose. From based on approach, we were able to discuss from the last video the different types of quantitative approach. And on this video, we are going to continue and let's start it on this slide. So the next one is qualitative approach. Here in the qualitative approach, it concerned with human behavior from informant's perspective. That means we are going to collect information by language and it assumes dynamic and negotiated reality. It's like the experiences of that participant and the data are reported in language format of the informant. So in addition also, there is an in-depth study of human behavior in a descriptive form collection of data. So let's put it in our heart that here in qualitative approach, it's an explanation in words. The participant will going to inform you his or her experiences. And actually, here in qualitative approach, we have six types. Number one is the phenomenological. Here in phenomenological, the researcher will examine the experience of a victim. The victim will going to give information to the researcher. And the researcher will examine the experiences of the victim only. Remember the word. There is only participant here. And they are the victims. Or he is the victim. An example here is that an accident occurred or MVA crash. The researcher will going to get information based on the experiences of that victim in the accident. Actually, here in phenomenological approach, it is thinking about the life experiences of the people. And they are using this phenomenological approach to prevent those things to happen to the public or to the crowd. Another example here is the experiences of people during the COVID season. How did they prevent it? What did they do? something like that. So it's still based on the experiences of people. The next one is the ethnographical. Here in the ethnographical, the researcher is learning to learn some culture by living with the cultures. It's like we're playing with a word. <laughs> learning to learn some culture by living with the people in that certain culture. So it provides framework for studying the meaning, patterns, and experiences of defined cultural group in holistic fashion. So for example, example, immersion. Immersion of nursing students in a province. So for example, the St. Paul nursing students are doing immersion in Lana and Rile. So these nursing students are actually looking forward for the culture of people in Lana and Rile. So they are living with them. They are working together to get the pattern and experiences of people in that certain group. The next one is grounded. Here in the grounded theory, the researcher is going to develop a new theory after the examination of data, which may be previous data in that topic that is not yet available. The researcher is going to describe and understand the key psychological and structural processes that occur in the social setting. The researcher actually is going to check the root of this problem and he or she is going to make another theory based from the causes or based from the things or from the data that he has in order for him to develop a new theory. So here, we don't have a theory yet. We are going to have a theory based from the collected data. Usually, this grounded theory is being used in social sciences like that. The next one is the historical. Here in this historical research, it is actually a narrative description or analysis of events that occurred in the past. And it is something related to the history by its name, historical. Okay, The researcher will going to collect past data and evaluate the 
old data and of course he or she will make a relationship what is being happened at present and what will happen in the future so this kind of researches will be used not only today but it will also be used in the future an example here is how did hand washing started and how does it affect the future medical world okay so that's it it's by its name and then you're just going to think about history today and the future that's in the historical the next one is the case studies here in the case studies i know that you guys are already familiar with this one and you are always doing it every now and then and of course case studies are being done by the nursing students and they are already loving this one i know <laughs> here in the case studies it's an in-depth examination and analysis of people or group of people in relation to nursing issues or problems that may improve the service it may be a group of people it may be a person only but the thing here is we are only studying a single topic and here in case study research we are just thinking about one topic here an example of this one is myocardial infarction and the last one is action research here in action research there is an implementation of actions to solve a problem then the researcher will go in to check the effect an action is taken in order to solve a problem an implementation is done in a problem then later on the researcher will go in to check the effect if it's valid or not an example here is a problem of nursing intervention in critical or in emergency issues in the Philippines. So as a researcher, he will go in to think as an intervention to apply the American Health Association guideline about the BLS or ACLS. Then he will go in to study the effect of this one. Is it better or what are the causes or the challenges that he encountered while implementing the study? May it be a cost effective or a patient safety development or a patient safety improvement or whatever always remember phenomenological ethnographical grounded theory historical case studies and action research these are all types of qualitative researches and the last one here in based on approach is the mixed research. Before we're going to discuss the types of mixed research, we need to understand what is mixed research. Mixed researches are using both types of data. It can be qualitative or quantitative data. The next one is it's an integrated approach to answer a research question. So it can be a collaboration or in integrated approach between the quantitative and qualitative. Always remember that here in mixed, we are going to use the quantity and the qualitative researches in order for us to answer some questions and to collect data, analyze and interpret those collected data. So here in mixed approach, we are going to understand the four types of mixed researches. Number one is the convergent. As I've mentioned earlier, the quantitative and qualitative approaches are being played here. So here in the convergent, the quantitative and qualitative data are collected at the same time. So convergent, they are on the same pace. Here in the explanatory, the quantitative data is collected first before the qualitative data. Then once the collection of data are done, it will be interpreted. Meanwhile, here in the exploratory, the qualitative data is collected first before the quantitative data. And the last one is the embedded. Here in the embedded, either the quantitative or the qualitative is nested within the predominant method which addressed a different question. Actually, here in embedded, the secondary method, either the quantitative or the qualitative, is not yet predominant. Meaning to say, it's like a little bit hidden. The secondary method is not yet dominant or it's still predominant or it's still a little bit hidden before, during, or after the interpretation of data. So how are we going to understand more? The thing is that we need to know the purpose. Why are we using convergent, exploratory, exploratory, or embedded? The purpose of convergent is we are going to obtain more complete understanding of two databases. So we need to understand the quantitative and qualitative data at the same time. It analyzes the quantitative and qualitative data separately. Meanwhile, here in the explanatory, we said earlier that quantitative will be collected first. The purpose here is to use qualitative data to help explain the quantitative research. Okay, so why did we use the quantitative data first and later on the qualitative data? Because qualitative will be a backup for the quantitative and vice versa here in exploratory. The quantitative will going to back up the qualitative approach. 
okay? And the last one here in the embedded, the purpose of this one is to address a different question that call for a different method. That is why it is predominant before, during, or after the interpretation, okay? So those are the mixed approaches. We have the convergent, explanatory, exploratory, and embedded. Meanwhile, we are going to understand also the research based on purpose. And actually, we only have two here. That is based on research or based on applied research. We need to identify the differences of them. Here in the based on research, we are actually expanding the current knowledge. And usually here in based on research, the researches that are being submitted by nursing students because some of the researches that they are doing, they are only improving the knowledge, improving the information that they have right now. So for example here is that the effect of unhealthy lifestyle of people in a certain problem or in a certain setting, okay? So that may be the effect of smoking to adolescents, something like that. So our research here is that the, the effect and our population are the adolescents, okay? So you are just improving the, your current knowledge, what may be the effect. However, here, here in the applied, we are studying a research to solve a particular life problem, okay? What may be the solution? I already have, for example, a problem like this. What could be the possible solutions or the possible proposed solutions in order for me to solve my problems. So for example, I have a manpower problem right now in my unit. What could be the solutions that I'm going to do as a head nurse or as a leader, as a nursing leader, in order for me to have a solution in here in manpower issues, okay? The next differences is that here in based on research, it is theoretical and exploratory in nature. We, You are just looking for things related literature review to support your or research. However, there is no solution to be done. It's just in the theory, okay? Meanwhile, here in the applied research, it is already a practical in nature because you are thinking of a solution in order for your problem or for your issues to be solved. Here in the based on research, it is wider in scope. So for example, our example earlier is the effect of smoking in adolescents. Your scope there is the adolescents. Your concept is too wide. However, here in the applied applied research, you are thinking of a solution in your own unit only. We mentioned earlier there's a problem of manpower in my unit. So it is more specific in scope because my scope is just in nursing and it's just in my unit. Understood? Okay. On the other hand, here in based on research, it's less associated with technology. Meanwhile, here in the applied, it is advanced in technology because you are already using a lot of things here in order for you to solve your issue. The next one is predict future phenomena. You can use this research in the future, maybe for prevention like that or something. Meanwhile, here in applied research, it creates solution and preventive to the future problem. So you are going to use that research that you are currently doing right now as a benchmark to the other future problems. Also here is that it's not only in the future problem. So for example, you already published that research. The other hospitals or the other units or the other nursing leaders will going to use your research as their base in order for them to prevent any problem to be occurred in their unit or in their hospital. Okay? And the last one is that here in based on research, it is curiosity driven. Because you are thinking of things, what are the prevention of like this, blah, 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 blah. You are curious in a wider scope and in a theoretical nature. Meanwhile, here in applied research, it is client driven. Because here, for example, you have a lacking of manpower. You are thinking that if you have a lack of manpower, your patients will be affected. So there is always an end recipient of your solution. If you are going to improve improve your manpower, you are also improving the patient safety or the patient satisfaction. So if we are going to compare these two, here in the based on research, it is wider in concept. Meanwhile, here in applied research, it is more specific. The differences also is that here in based on research, mostly the nursing students are using it, while the applied researches, the nursing leaders are actually using it in order for them to improve nursing in their unit or in their hospital. This is the overview of research based on approach and based on purpose. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.